It's me, Lance Meister, the Undead Viking, coming to you live from my... Well, not live, I guess. Well, live when I did this. But coming to you from my gaming dojo here in Moorhead, Minnesota. I'm just going to take a few minutes out of your day to talk to you about a game called Wizards of the Wild. I don't have a game box for you. I do apologize. But the game is called Wizards of the Wild. This is a new game from Adam West. Uh, you might know him from uh, his game that he... Uh, Designed Ninjato, one of my favorite games that came out well, about two years ago, I believe it was. Um, this is a game about uh, the idea of what if all the humans in the world vanished, and human wizards, I guess, technically, and um, their familiars were set free, and now their familiars are having a wizard duel uh, to determine... Uh, which animal species is going to run the forest, if you will. It, it's kind of a goofy little theme, but um, it has fun little card play and actions and plus some really cool dice that you get to roll. And, uh, you know, and I knew when he was describing the game to me that it was going to hit on all cylinders for me. This is this is one of those games that, like, it's a, it's a lighthearted game, and it is a game on the lighter side, but it has just enough interesting decisions and, and, and tricky little moments that... Uh, that it was going to appeal to me and appeal, I knew, uh, to my daughter because of the fact that we got to play with little woodland creatures. So, uh, let me tell you how to play the game. shouldn't take too long. We'll come back here and I'll tell you exactly what I think of Wizards of the Wild. Cool. Let's do this. This is Wizards of the Wild, and I have gone ahead and just set the game up. Um, just just kind of walk you through what the setup process takes. I set up a four-player game, so I put everybody's scoring disc here on 10. Uh, that's what you start off with, because you can lose points as the game progresses, judging by the different cards that get pulled, but we'll get into that when we show you how the game plays. Um, each person will get an animal card. Uh, as I remember, these are the, like, uh, the, the familiars of the wizards that used to be around but have disappeared, and now the familiars are, are trying to determine who's the uh, most powerful uh, species of animal living in the forest. Uh, I have picked Clive the Badger uh, to be my representation, basically because I like badgers. Badgers are a pretty cool creature. Um, you have these two big decks. This is a book. Um, uh, these are the, the different kinds of cards that you'll be purchasing um, as, as you play the game. The different type of cards are uh, spells and challenges. Um, spells will have permanent effects that you'll be able to use as the game is played. Uh, challenges have a one-time action uh, that will affect the game in some way and may contribute towards endgame scoring, but after that one-time action is done, you just flip the card over and, and, and it's it's uh, you keep it, you don't discard it, but um, you don't reference it for the rest of the game. Uh, you also might see this deck of cards, that is a deck of Acolytes. Uh, these are the creatures that um, you're trying to appease in some way, and they are actually working against you a little bit because they will have some negative uh, actions. If you uh, do the worst during the turn of the game, there are you know there are seven of these cards, so there's seven turns to the game. If you uh, do the worst uh, of everybody, um, basically there's a there's a track of how many skulls you can get as this goes up. Whoever gets the the most skulls will get the negative. Uh, reaction uh, from the Acolyte. Um, you'll notice that there's some cards over here. Uh, the reason for that is is because uh, there is a certain number, you'll notice there's one spell book on there and one little lightning bolt over there. Um, and then if we go down a little further, you will see there's two lightning bolts there and there are two spell books there. And so there's like phase one and phase two, and depending on the number of people that you play, uh, having being playing the game um, with four, there's only ten of the phase one, and that's the most possible. As you get less players, there's less of those. And um, any of the extras, you can see these have the one on them, are uh, not used. And there's eight acolyte cards, and you only use seven. So, you know, it's, it's part of that. I like that when you have that in the game, you can't always count on the same cards uh, being present when you play. So these won't be used, so we're just going to go 
ahead and, and pull them aside. I just wanted to show you that there is more than just these cards that you have available. Um, there's dice here that we use on our turn. I'm going to show you the turn in just a second. Also, when you play the game, you have to decide as a group if you're going to use the special powers uh, that these uh, particular um, like wizards, wizard pets or uh, familiars have. So like, you know, Wazoo and the Raccoon can uh, each turn they can gain uh, gems and skulls um, you may bribe an acolyte twice per turn. So you, you things like that. I mean, it's just like the, just little little powers that you can use to break the rules, if you will. And um, like, if you want to play a more advanced game with those, you can. If you don't want to use them, that that's fine. It's, that's completely your option. So to begin the game, you're going to take two cards off the top of the deck of the uh, challenges and two cards off the top of the deck. Um, spells, and these will be the beginning things uh, that you can get. Now, I'm just going to show you examples of each card. So here's um, this is this is uh, over here. This is a challenge, and this is an assassination attempt. And you can see that it has the little lightning bolt there. And this too, that's the cost it is to get this. And so you can see this. There's a, <laughs> a pig and 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 uh, the wolf. And this is a pretty evil looking wolf too. I mean, I, I realize this game is a little lighthearted, and you know, in a lot of ways, the artwork here, I really like it. But the artwork reminds me a little bit of Seasons in a way, just kind of the theme or whatever. And I, and I dig it though. And so uh, you can see that you know, there's like okay, he's gonna maybe attack this pig who's brushing their teeth. But um, the challenge is uh, immediately lose uh, two, and the, the, you know that's that's. Uh, you know these little like the little potion symbol and then you gain a gem and so like you take it and it's done and then you can see over here you're going to turn this card over and at the end of the game it's going to be worth four victory points so you know just that that's uh one of the things there and like here well, i'll show you a spell now uh you can tell it's a spell because it's got the spell book over there and it's worth it costs you four uh to to purchase it and if you look here, um, you now this is the type of spell, and you might have uh, like a, you might get a card that says you know score extra points at the end of the game for how many shadow cards you have or whatever. So that's why the, that terminology is there. So you can see it's a scorch first shot, and then um, you know, have have three skulls. All their players uh, lose a gem potion, and you gain a gem. So you know it's a, like kind of a, a you. If you have three skulls, like so on your turn you gain those three skulls, then that happens. So even though skulls are bad to get, some spells it's actually useful um, to, to get the skulls, if you will. So, I mean, it, it's just one of those things that as the game progresses, uh, and, and the more you play the game, you'll kind of learn how that flow works or whatever. So, all right, so we've gone ahead and set up. We put our four cards out for our opening tableau, and now we're going to uh, go ahead and actually uh, show you how the play, game is played. So the first thing you're going to do uh, when you begin the first round is you're going to take the top Acolyte card, you're going to turn it over, and I'm just going to show you that really quick. So here we have Acolyte Tippy, and you can see he's, well, he's just kind of, I don't know, is that like a mini pincher or uh, some sort of dog, anyway. So the first thing that happens is that everyone's going to lose one potion or mana, and so everybody has to mark that on their on their sheet, and so you just go ahead and put that down like that. Now this is the opening, uh, the opening of the game, and so everybody's going to have mana to begin with, but if you don't have mana and it's telling you to lose mana, you have to rate, take a skull at that point. So you know, so that that is what occurs. You know, it, it's one of those things, and that's going to count towards your total skulls for the for the turn. And so uh, every acolyte has a uh, a bribery action, and this is if you spend four gems, if you pay Tippy four gems, you can gain seven victory points. That's pretty good, right? And also this this little thing with the negative three victory points over here, whoever has the most skulls at the end of this round is going to get minus three to their victory point total, and that's immediately uh, added uh, to the, your track over here. Along with if you the gaining of this as well. Now I should mention that if like one or more people tie uh, for the uh, the most skulls, then everybody who ties loses the victory points unless every player ties for the most skulls. And then at that point, there's no point in even marking it because of the fact that everybody's going to stay exactly the same as far as the uh, difference in victory points. So there. So you put that guy off to the side like that so you know what you're going to be doing with. You took the minus one to your uh, mana at the beginning of the game. And then each person is going to take these dice 
and these dice have lots of different uh, things on them, but they all match up with the different uh, things that are on them. I'm going to pick that one up because my thing, my, uh, my uh, uh, markers are on there, but they're going to have these symbols, and the, the symbols are a little tough to see, so I do apologize for that, but so, you know, they have um, these arcane symbols, uh, well, you know, the, and these are, if you notice, remember, over on like the cards, they have those symbols on them, and those are what you use to buy uh, the, the the cards. And and these are like what you have in storage. And you're going to roll these numbers on the dice as well. And then, of course, then you have um, the gems and the potions and the skulls. Uh, and so, when you take your dice, you're going to roll them all like so. And and this is a, this is another one of those games where you roll the dice. Uh, keep what you want, and then roll the dice again. Keep what you want, and then roll the dice a third time. And if you want, you can stop at any time if you got the perfect roll. And so you you take a moment to to look at um, you know what's out there as far as what you want to buy. I mean, do I want this scorch for a shot? It seems pretty cool. I mean, if you get skulls, you get you get some bonuses there at the end. Um, you know the shadowy uh, wind. Uh, you know that looks pretty good too. Uh, you can change the acolyte's most skull penalty to gain one. A victory point per skull of all players combined. So, I mean, that's one of those things where it's like, oh, well, even if I get kind of hammered, that's actually really nice, you know? And so, but anyway, regardless, you, you're going to go ahead and uh, roll, and you sit here and see what you get. So I'm going to mark these up here. So I got these, I got four mana. And I should mention that, like, you might be wondering what mana is used for. There's a lot of spell effects um, that you will have to use mana for, or spell effects that other people are going to do that are going to cause you to lose mana. And remember, if your mana ever goes to zero, um, you're going to gain a skull. And, and, and you gain one for each mana that you're supposed to lose. So if your mana is at zero, and somebody uses an effect on you that causes you to lose two mana, you're going to get two skulls in that situation. So um, mana is not only used for certain spell effects, but it's also used basically to prevent yourself from losing points. So that's important. So, um, you know, and also obviously gems are really important too because of the fact that, you know, you can get those victory points if you can, you know, use the stuff in your reserve or, you know, it first different things as well. So, you know, gems are always nice. But you'll notice I did roll one skull. Whenever you roll a skull, you go ahead and put that up on the track. So I rolled a skull. I have to do that no matter what happens. So, um, I did get uh, one tome slash arcane roll, which is one of the better things you can get because you can use this as both a tome or an arcane. So I'm gonna, le I'm definitely gonna keep that one. I got a tome, which I'm definitely gonna keep because I really want that shadowy wind spell. So now I've got two, and technically, since I've got two tome in the bank, I can get it right now. So everything else I get at this point is gravy. Well, I'm gonna want to reroll the skull for sure because why do I want to keep the skull? I want to try to get a better uh, something better. And, I, you know, these things, that you get two mana for each one, but I, I'm still sitting at four, so I'm feeling pretty good. So I'm actually going to keep the gem, because I want, I want that gem. Hopefully, if I get some more gems, uh, then I can get... Because right now, I've got three gems in my stock, and I've got, you know, one. So technically, I can, I can bribe him with my turn, so I can get those seven victory points, which is nice. But let's see if I can, I can get some better rolls here. So let's see. I got another gem. That's good. And I got an arcane... And I got another tome. So, no, uh, I want the tome, definitely. And I'm not going to bother with anything. So, uh, let's just, hopefully, I can get one more tome and then I don't have to spend anything that's in uh, my, my reserve. And I got another skull, which, <laughs> you know, that kind of stinks. So, but, and that's good that I did roll that, actually, because of the fact that every time you re-roll, if you get a skull, you have to add it. You know, you, so it, it's something that you have to bear in mind that if you keep pressing your luck, uh, there's a chance you're going to get a bunch of skulls, you know, if, if you keep rolling those dice. So there we have it. I have um, those things that uh, available to me, and I'm going to do what I said. I want this shadowy wind. So I'm going to take the shadowy wind, and I'm going to put it over here, and that costs four. And so I'm going to spend that immediately. So I have one, two, three... And I'm going to go ahead and reduce one out of my bank. And so that takes care of those dice. I have these two gems. I can just go ahead and add the two gems. One, two, like that. Now I have my gems in my uh, my card. But I have the option now, if I want to, I can cast spells if I have them available. Which I don't. You know, because I mean, this, is, this spell is more of... Um, like if I end up being the person with the most skulls, I can I can then you know flip it and it won't 
uh, you know, it won't be something bad, but you know, that's something that's going to be very helpful later on in later turns. And maybe I can even have a strategy where I'm going to go for skulls, you know, and try to like do that so I can, I can be, uh, the, 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 the that possibly I can, so I can use this, use that as, as a way to get lots of points. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to spend one, two, well, I already put it over here. So I'm going to spend one, two, three, four, spend those gems. I'm going to gain the seven victory points. So I'm going to go ahead and take that one and move it up to 17 like so. And then I'm done. Now, a couple of things that could have happened that uh, I didn't do. You might be wondering how do, you know, you know, is it possible to bank these things over there? Yes, only three uh, tomes or three arcane that you only bank up to three. But you can only do that unless you have a power that allows you to change the rules or break the rules. But you can only do that if you don't buy a card on your turn. So, uh if you so basically if if you roll really poorly and like you don't can't buy any of the cards or just choose not to you can turn that energy and put it into your bank on your uh, on your character sheet over there so uh then the next person will go and when the next person goes they have a blank spot and you can buy more cards if you got enough to buy more than one card go to town you can you can buy more cards so i mean technically i have two i could have spent i could go like this spend two and I am going to go ahead, and you know, like, so like, let's say I did that. So um, I went ahead and I bought the assassination attempt card. So I'm going to go ahead and immediately lose two uh, mana. So one, two, you know, maybe this isn't the best idea I had, you know, you know, but, you know, so losing the mana there. And then I'm going to gain a gem. So, whoop. But more importantly, maybe. The fact that this card's going to be worth four victory points at the end of the game. So I'm going to take that one, and I'm going to put a face down like that, because I really did that. All right, so now I'm done with my turn. The person to my left goes, and now they get to fill up those two empty spots. And they can fill them up with whatever cards they want. So it's towards the beginning of the game. Maybe the next player wants to do two spells. So they're going to take two spells, and they got um, the animation of brooms. Uh, you may... Uh, you may gain, and this is a spell, remember, um, you may gain uh, two mana and a skull. You know, so you just you know, can cast that spell on your turn. And remember, spells don't go away. Or, and then take it on the chin. Uh, if you have two skulls, all other players lose a potion and gain, and you gain one, vi one victory point. Pretty cool spell, right? So, now the next person goes, they're going to do the exact same thing. Roll the dice, whatever goes all the way around the table, and then after everybody's taking their turn, you check and see who's got the most skulls. If you, know, you end up being the person that has the most skulls, you're going to lose those three victory points. Uh, but remember, I have that ability. You may change the Acolyte's most skull penalty to gain one victory point per shadow spell of all players combined. So I've got that one shadow spell, so maybe maybe somebody bought it make brooms, you know, and so now there's or, or maybe they bought taking the chin. Maybe all three of those went. So let's say I did, like the other players somehow managed to not get any, only got one or less skulls. And so I've got two skulls. Okay, I'm gonna change that ability. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna change it to because there's three maybe like I said, these two spells were taken and they're both shadow spells. I'm going to gain, instead of losing three victory points, I'm going to end up gaining three victory points for that particular situation. And that's the kind of stuff that this game happens. There's all this kind of clever little card play and, and, and you know, different uh, different abilities and cards, you know, working in in uh, conjunction with each other. Um, and the cool thing with that one is, what if I had tied somebody? We both, me and another player, both had, um, you know, two skulls. So we're both going to take the penalty. Now do I take the penalty? Or do I change it? Because it changes it for them as well. So it's all kind of cool little like things going on like that when you play the game. Um, you play until you get through all seven of the Acolytes. And after the first turn, then you flip over the next Acolyte. And, um, well, oh, okay, this one doesn't have a picture, but um, Acolyte Snuggles. Uh, so you minus one, it's a minus two. And if you spend, holy cow, if you spend six uh, gems, you'll gain nine victory points. Now, obviously, this is a prototype, so obviously, I don't know what Snuggles is going to look like. I'm sure it'll be epic, though. So, and then you then you go around and you do it again. Keep doing that till you empty out the Acolyte deck, and, uh, and then you just uh, total up whoever has the most victory points will win the game at that point. So, all right, so it's like, it's a very, uh, very 
very fast game, uh, very clever game, and I like it a lot. But uh, let me tell you more about it uh, in my, in my uh, conclusion, which I'll do right now. I showed you uh, Wazoon the Raccoon uh, because uh, Wazoon is my daughter's favorite. I think mostly uh, just because of Rocket and because Guardians of the Galaxy is like her favorite movie of all time right now. So, um, but just to show you the other ones, there was Quantum the Cat. And I really dig this artwork. And this is the other guy I like, just Earwig the Fox. <laughs> just Earwig. Uh, and Luna the Hare. That's another one my daughter likes as well. She likes bunnies. And uh, finally, Nakan the Owl. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, and it's just a, kind of a cool idea, you know. And, and you know, Adam probably could have gone any which way uh, with the theme. You know, he could have made these real wizards or whatever. But he, when he went with this theme, like I said, I knew uh, this was going to appeal to my daughter. And this was like one of those perfect games for her. She's almost eight years old, and um, it's really fun. I mean, usually in the past, I had to kind of walk her through. It's like, you know, this card would be really good for you, you know, because this will give you these points, or this will let you cast a spell, or, or what have you. But this is, uh, this is kind of a test game. Uh, for for Rylan and I and um, and I kind of just let her play and and like and it took her a while to kind of grasp some of the intricacies of it and it took her a while to kind of get figure out you know which dice she should re-roll and what have you but um, after like the second or third play I mean she was really the game was really clicking for her and um, and, and I don't know for sure if like it had just been about wizards or whatever she would have liked it, but because of the fact that all these little pictures and the artwork, which is amazing, as I said, um, was these animals and, and these kind of funny pictures, she really took to it. And and I mean, I'm not going to say gateway, gateway. I hate labeling games as gateway games because um, uh, she doesn't need a gateway game. She loves playing board games. But I definitely can see this appealing to people and this is definitely one of those games where it's just going to be like, wow, I can see having other people play this and they're going to say, I've never even played a game like this. Or I've never even heard of a game like this. You know, and, and, I, and I can see like all the little cool things about you know, collecting your resources and saving them and putting them to work for you. And then like, you know, getting those cards to kind of work in concert with each other. You know, figuring out that maybe, as I showed you when I was showing you the gameplay, maybe you can figure out a way that skulls aren't a bad thing. You know, or, you know, is it worth it for me to get skulls to hurt somebody, you know, and hurt the other players and, and, and you know, and, and the possibility that I'm going to get some negative points as well. So there's all kinds of fun things like that. And I really, really enjoy games that make me feel smart or make me feel clever, I guess is probably a better word. Um, whenever I play a game like this and I actually get to a point where, like, I'm able to, like, string a couple of cards together and I thought, well, that'd be really good if I could get those two cards to you know, kind of, um, that spell and, and that challenge, if I could put those two together this turn, that would really, like, give me, like, that little boost of uh, points, and I'd be able to, like, you know, bribe the Acolyte and get, you know, that, like, that one, and, you know, like, get six, you know, gems together so I can get those nine points or whatever. And, um, when I'm able to chain that stuff together, it, it makes me feel, like I said, clever or smart. And this game has all kinds of ripe little moments like that. And little little moments of aha, you know, and uh, like I said, the theme and the artwork certainly doesn't hurt as well. If you are looking for a lighthearted game that is on the lighter side, but um, is going to appeal to a family or appeal to um, kind of the few of the non-gamer friends that you have, um, I definitely would recommend you checking this out. Um, if you like kind of a fantasy-based theme or just uh, um, like enroll the whole the process of the rolling the dice and, and you know collecting resources like that. Um, like you know I'm a big big fan of dice heroes. I, I I've I, I think um, the inclusion of the randomness of dice can only help uh, uh, most you know, euro strategy games. So um, if that's your deal as well, um, I'd strongly suggest checking this out. And um, if you're just looking for that perfect little, because I can only imagine this is going to come in a small little box, and uh, a game that you can you know throw into your uh, backpack or what have you and bring to work so you can play with your buddies uh, over lunch, it's, it's, it's something that's perfect for that as well, because the game doesn't take a long time, you can teach it in about five minutes, and uh, it's a heck of a lot of fun. And, and it's one of those like games that 
um, you don't have to be like on top of the game and constantly and thinking about it. You can have your Subway sandwich in one hand and your, your fountain soda in the other and uh, you know talking about whatever meeting you just had with your buddy while you wait for your turn and it's that type of game and those types of games for me are highly enjoyable um, they, they provoke interaction provoke uh, uh, an interesting response from the people around me and uh, and always have a spot on my gaming shelf so there you go if you have any questions about Wizards of the Wild please post those I'll try to answer those to the best of my ability as always, it's a broken record, but I really, really do appreciate uh, you taking the time to watch my videos, and uh, I really hope that you're having an awesome day right now. If not, try to have one. All right, I will uh, talk to you at the next video. Take care now. Bye-bye.